Excellent. Well, you can find a full list of all the police stations in the capital, which are to close on our website. They're just there up on the screen for you now. Well, staying with the mayor and coming up later in the programme... You're a nasty piece of work, aren't you? Well, I, you know, I, Eddie, I think, I think all, all, all three things I would, I would dispute. Has Boris Johnson's ambition for Downing Street been dealt a blow? We assess his chances ahead of a documentary about him tonight. So, has Boris Johnson damaged his reputation and his chances of ever becoming Prime Minister following an interview he gave to the BBC? Many of today's papers were critical of his performance on the Andrew Marr show yesterday, while those closest to Boris criticised the questioning. It all comes ahead of a documentary about London's mayor on BBC Two tonight. In a moment, we'll get a reaction to the interview. But first, this from our political editor, Tim Donovan. Not a common sight recently, less than flattering headlines in the national newspapers about Boris Johnson, resulting from a weekend interview where it wasn't his mayoral record, but events of long ago with which he was confronted. What happened? Well, I can tell you the whole thing. I mean, it was, it, it, I think, our, you know, I think, do, do, are you sure our viewers wouldn't want to hear more about well, housing? Right, Today, his <laughs> colleagues and family rallied to his defence. I thought Eddie Mazinski was about the most <coughs> disgusting piece of journalism I've listened to for a very long time. The BBC sank about as low as it could. I don't think any of the questions that were asked were about his integrity as a mayor, as a politician. They were dredging up gossip from about 20 years ago. It's all linked to a documentary tonight taking a personal look at Boris Johnson. He cooperated and his family provided material for it. I suspect one of the reasons he may have decided after six weeks that he was going to take part in this, that, that he would thought this would be a way of answering the questions after the, the film had gone out. He said, I dealt with all that in the cultural interview, in the cultural documentary. At City Hall, it's being seen as a distraction. For a number of years we've been asking him questions like this. His inability to give a straightforward answer to very straight questions is just, you know, it's just appalling really. That's the Boris we know. He turns up, he doesn't read detail, he doesn't prepare for things and ultimately I think the interview did show his true colours, things he's done in the past coming back to haunt him. But if there was private delight among some Tory MPs, others said it would be short-term discomfort. I'm always reminded of the famous uh, phrase from uh, Groucho Marx who said, once you, can, um, once you can fake sincerity, you've got it made. And uh, to that extent, I think, uh, you know, people love Boris and uh, will do so for many years to come. The mayor says it wasn't his finest hour. He will hope it proves just a temporary diversion on what he wants to be an onward journey. Tim Donovan, BBC London News. Well, I'm joined now by two people who've written biographies of Boris Johnson, Andrew Jimson and Sonia Purnell. Thank you both for coming in. First of all, we've all seen the headlines. Um, is Boris the Joker stringing us all along? Bicycle crash of an interview. Um, first of all, how damaging have these, has this interview been, do you think? Well, I think it's a good thing he's been asked some tough questions because a lot of people think Boris has been having an easy ride. But I think actually it made very good television and people already knew what kind of a guy he was and those who liked him will go on liking him. So this will have no impact on him? Very little, I think. It's the storm in a teacup, actually. Sonia Pennell, do you agree with that? No well, impact? I, I do agree that he's the Houdini of uh, British politics, and he's got out of all sorts of scrapes in the past, and no doubt will get out of this one. But I think, you know, Eddie Mayer is one of those BBC voices, loved, respected. He gave a very, very, um, you know, tough grilling of Boris. Boris didn't come out of it very well. And I think there is a sort of residue from that. The story will move on, but there's a residue of, can we trust this guy? And he's going to have to do quite a lot, I think, to win people's, people's trust back. Is this, do you think, though, perhaps a game changer in terms of the level of scrutiny which is levelled at him? The detail which perhaps some people say in the past he hasn't had to answer or has always avoided answering? Well, I think it might be. I mean, I think no one's under any sort of illusion now that he doesn't want to be Prime Minister. And obviously the nearer you get to real power, the more likely, the more necessary it is to be put under some sort of scrutiny. I mean, so far he's invited attention, but not scrutiny. And I guess that might change now. Actually, uh, these things have been scrutinised. The, the, the Guppy tape, he was on Have I Got News For You years ago about that. And it happened, I mean, the tape was recorded 23 years ago. And, he, and his, his unfortunate episode with the Times newspaper was 25 years ago. So the, the, oddly enough, Eddie Mayer, I mean, 
good luck to him, but he didn't actually have anything new to chuck at Boris. But th doesn't this change things to a degree in that he is being picked up on now on the fact that he, he won't address a certain level of detail, suggesting that he actually people do regard him uh, as potential for moving up to be either leader of the party or perhaps prime minister? Well, I think there are some people who will always disapprove of Boris. People of a sort of puritanical mentality think that he's an utterly disgraceful figure, but I think they thought that already. So I don't I'd be surprised if it's a game changer, although, of course, things go th through fashions. But, but this isn't about morality, is it? This is actually about detail, about being able to answer questions to the electorate. Well, I think, they, these, they was, I think that actually it's the question of integrity and trust. So I think it is about morality, but I think morality is an in, inadequate guide to what actually happens in politics and to why people do or don't vote for someone like Boris. Sonia Pennell, do you think this sort of episode will affect the way people choose to vote for Boris Johnson, or is it going to continue to be predominantly sort of style over substance in some people's opinion? Uh, I think it has been style over substance until now, but I, what we didn't have in the interview yesterday was um, penetrating questions about his record as mayor. Um, do you think that'll change as a result of this? Well, I think it might. I, I do think it might, and, and we've been so lacking in that so far on national TV. I think we've done very well in BBC London, but on national TV, there's been very little about that, and it is very important if you want to be Prime Minister. Do you the, think tr the trouble with the questions about being married is a lot of them are uh, uh, it's municipal politics, and it's not that fascinating, especially for a national audience. You know, how, how you make the buses run on time is you know, difficult to sort of sustain interest in that. But justifying policies is, is crucial, ultimately, isn't it? Well, yes. Uh, well, it's a crucial element. I think character, actually, is people vote more on character, I would say, on, on whether they like you or don't than they do on, on, on what you're going to do about the buses. Okay, we shall see. Thank you both very much for your time.